It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. When you're generous, you get outside of your comfort zone, and literally, you are believing God and trusting God that He watches His Word to perform it. So when you're generous, He said, if you sow generously, you will reap what? Generous. Amen? And so we start off, first of all, being tithers. Tithing, the word tithe, means a tenth, 10%. I know some of y'all tried to negotiate that. A tenth, 10%. You say, well, I just wanted to put God on salary. Listen, <laughs> if you put God on salary, that means he works for you. If you put him on percentage, it means you're partners. That means it is to his advantage for you to increase. Now, you don't want to be like the rich guy I went to his pastor and said, Pastor, I've tithed all my life. He said, I give 10% tithe all my life. He said, but actually, um, uh, I've got a lot of money now. He said, I'm rich. He said, I, I just can't get, I'll give something, but I just can't give 10% of that. I can't tithe. So the pastor said, well, that's fine. Just let me pray with you before you leave. So I began to pray. He said, Lord, I just... Pray that you'll reduce my brother's income to the place that he'll be able to tithe again. <laughs> All right, let's go back to this. So, so the, the tithe, <laughs> the tithe, <laughs> oh my. This could take several weeks because some of y'all are listening really slow. You're like, <laughs> now, we might want to bring a lunch next time. All right, so the tithe <laughs> is simply the first step to honoring God in the area of your finances. But the tithe is not the end. It really is only the beginning of generosity. Yeah. It's only the beginning. So I'm going to read this. I got this out of a book several years ago, and this is some of the noted tithers in America. Noted tithers in America. Just a, a small list here. J.C. Penney, owner of the J.C. Penney stores, was a tither. Mr. Kraft of Kraft Cheese Company started tithing when he was pushing a milk and cheese cart on the streets of New York. A.A. A. Hyde, owner of Mentholatum, a tither. Mr. Hines of 57 Varieties, a tither. Mr. Kerr of the Kerr Jar Co Company, a tither. Mr. Proctor, Proctor & Gamble of Ivory Soap, it was a tither. Mr. Hershey of Hershey's Chocolate. Did your mouth start watering? He was a tither. Mr. Jarman, shoe manufacturer, a tither. Mr. Kellogg of Corn Flakes, a tither. Mr. Curl of Quaker Oats, a tither. William Colgate of Colgate Shaving Cream, Toothpaste, etc. He started tithing when he was a young man, and he tithed one-tenth, 10%. Then he went to two-tenths, 20%. Then he went to three-tenths, 30%. Then he went to four-tenths, 40%. Then he went to five-tenths and gave 50%. And then he saved enough money to live on and gave God all of his income. Everybody go, wasabi. <laughs> all right. John D. Rockefeller. John D. Rockefeller, financial wizard of the world, began tithing at the age of eight years old. He said, I've tithed on every dollar that God entrusted to me. I want to say to you that I could have never tithed on my first million if I had not tithed on my first salary of $1.50 a week. He became one of the richest men in the world. R.G. Letourneau. Born-again believer, manufacturer of earth movers and all kinds of heavy equipment, accepted Christ, and he decided to go into business with God. 
everything went really good for a few years. Then it says he said he got off track. He started getting behind financially. And so he told God, I, can, I cannot afford to tithe. So he said, just give me a chance to build the business and then I'll tithe. He said, I got off track. He said, I about went bankrupt. He said, and then I talked to God. And he said, God said, it takes faith to tithe on the front side, not wait and give God what's left over. So he gave his first fruits to God. And he says, and he kept doing that. And then he says here, R.G. Letourneau became a very wealthy man in heaven as well as on earth. He actually gave 90% of his income and lived on 10%. Amen. East Texas, R.G. Letourneau, built earth moving machine. He said, God, if you'll prosper me, I'll give you 90%. I'll live on 10%. Hmm. Wasabi. <laughs> but I'd rather have 10% of 100 million than 90% of 50,000. I know you're trying to figure that right now. You go, nah. now, why don't you say that again? In other words, God literally, whoo, I like to say it this way God can take you places in blessing that you have never been before. You may not go where no man has gone before, but you can go where no one in your family has ever been before. I said, God can take you places in blessing and in abundance. Come on. And God's not opposed to you being rich. He's opposed to us being covetous. Covetous is doing what? Getting all you can, can all you get, and sit on the can. In other words, covetousness is stingy and holding on to money. I love to tell this story about the, <laughs> about the guy that, that uh, told his wife, he said, I worked hard for my money. All my life, <laughs> I worked hard. He said, and I've saved up my money, and I'm going to be the first one to take my money with me when I die. He said, matter of fact, I got it all up in the attic, and when I die, I'm taking my money. I worked, that's my money. I worked hard for it, and I'm going to take it with me. Well, one day he died, you know, so his wife climbed up in the, base, uh, climbed up in the attic, and all the money was still there. She said, hmm, he should have put it in the basement. <clears throat> You see, that's so I could get it on the way down. In other words, you didn't bring nothing in. You ain't taking nothing out. Come on, our generosity literally demonstrates that God is our source, that not money, not mammon. We live for God. And if you'll seek first the kingdom of God. Come on now, if you're married, I said if you're married, you're a husband and a wife, you got a covenant together. We're going to put God first. Come on. So in our family, my dad was more than a tither. My dad was actually a 50% giver. Wow, I heard Dad Hagen, he came in our church, my dad's church, and he taught about <clears throat> a guy in his church that gave 30%. <laughs> you may know the story. Dad Hagen told that my dad's church probably when I was just a teenager, 17 years old. He told the story about a guy in his church that was a leader in the church, serving church, gave 30%, right? And that guy had an accident at work, was about to die. Dad Hagen went to the hospital and was praying for him. So he said, I pleaded his case in the hospital hallway. So he said, that guy's in there. The doctor said he can't live. He lived to be a cripple all of his life. And so he said, I began to pray. I said, I began to plead my case. I said, Lord, I, I can't let him die. He serves in the church. He's very valuable. He uh, important in the community. He actually gives 30% of his income to the church. Lord, I need him. He said, if I need him, you need him, so I'm not going to let him die. So I want him here. I need him, so I can't let him die. He said he did that all night long. The guy came back perfectly healed. He said he was in heaven, and Jesus pulled back a curtain and said, your pastor won't let you die. I thought, isn't that interesting? I wonder how you'd pray for some people. <laughs> like, God, they really don't do nothing down here. I'm so sorry. God, they really don't do nothing. <laughs> you can't get them to tie. Just keep them, God. Just keep them up there. <laughs> so Dad Hagen came and started talking about, you know, 
generosity, and this guy gave 30%. So I was just a teenager sitting there, and I thought, I'm going to do this. So immediately, I, my dad always taught me to tithe. He'd actually figure it for you. <laughs> I mean, you're just a little kid. I make $3, you know, mowing the yard. And they said, now remember. <laughs> Honor God first. All right. So then, just a teenager, I started double tithing, which is really tithing and sowing. So I decided to sow 10%, give tithe 10%, and give another 10%. So I gave 20%. I did that. So when Trent and I first met, we were getting married. I said, you know, Trent, uh, my financial covenant with God is that I'm a 20% giver. 20%. So as soon as we get our check every week, back in those days, I made $100 a week. When we first got married, everything we owned fit in my car. <laughs> it was full, but that's all we had. You know, the trunk, back seat. <laughs> my daddy was very generous with God, but when it came to me, <laughs> it's like, there is a God and I'm not him. <laughs> you know what that means? You better go meet God and get a job. So... Even my granny, after she passed away, my daddy had my granny's old furniture and old refrigerator. So I got married. I said, Daddy, what about my granny's old furniture and refrigerator? He said, yeah, you can come get that if you want. He said, uh, I'll set up a payment plan for you. <laughs> <laughs> Almost made me mad. Then I went, all right, buddy, there is a God. Come on. In other words, I'm going to have my faith in God. You're not the source of my supply. Amen. God's my source. So he actually taught me how to have faith in God. Amen. And so in that area, so I decided, well, 20% giver, got married, told Trent of that. We're 20% giver. So I said, you know, you're not going to have the fanciest furniture and all that stuff right up front, you know, in time. God will bless us. Matter of fact, in time, you know, you get whatever kind of car you want. We'll, the Lord will take care of that. Now, it's not right now, so don't get excited. But I'm just telling you, in time, God will provide for us. <laughs> So we're giving 20%. Well, after we gave 20%, then uh, about a year later, you know, two years later, along come the kids, you know, here come the babies. All right. When the babies came along, now my pastor in the church, and I made $160 a week. So the Lord spoke to me and he said, when would you like to increase to that 30%? I said, well, Lord, not right now. I mean, obviously this is not a good time. I'm already out doing most of the people around here. I'm already 20%. Does that bother you? Come on. Uh, he said, no, you said you want to do 30%. When would you like to start that? I said, well, I just had two kids come along here. I don't have no Obamacare. I don't have no Trump care. I don't, come on. I don't have no insurance. What is that? You know, either you get healed or you die. So I said, Lord, this is not a good time. Not a good time for generosity. All right. So I was reading Malachi where God said, your tithe and your offering opens one to heaven. And then that verse, it says, prove me now. I was literally reading that, and those three words jumped right off that page. I mean, it jumped right off the page and just hit me. And I went, prove me now. Ah, so this is about me and God. Yes. Not me in the church, not me and some preacher, not me and my job. This is me and God. Amen. Prove me now. I said, now? <laughs> Did I not explain to you that it's not a good time? All right, so I went and told Trent, I said, you know, I've always wanted to do this, so we're fixing to crank it up to 30%. She said, good, let's do it. And I'm like, hmm. <laughs> so I cranked it up to 30%. Listen, my hands break out in a sweat every Sunday. I'm like, oh, God, I hope you don't go blind. Can you see this? You said you'd multiply it, so I know you can at least count. So look at this. 
I'm just telling my own personal testimony. I don't know yours, so I'm just telling you mine, right? So when I'm giving 30%, so my 30% was about $50 a week. And I'll tell you real quickly, because that's 40 years ago. That $50 a week, come on, is on a percentage now. That $50 a week, I noticed, turned into $100 a week. Then I noticed it turned into $200 a week. Then I noticed it turned into $300. Then I noticed the 30% turned into $500 a week. Then it turned into $1,000 a week. When it hit $1,000 a week, I was like, I'm giving $1,000 a week. (laughs) And as soon as I said that, the Lord said, do you believe you could give two thousand? We went, woo, wasabi. Come on. In other words, on that percentage litter, I'm talking about a forty-year story. I went from giving, come on, a thousand a week to giving two thousand a week, then giving three thousand dollars a week, then giving four thousand a week, then giving five thousand. Then when I started giving ten thousand a week, I went, is there no limits to this? Come on, the earth is the Lord's. Come on. Your generosity literally will unlock God's ability and God's generosity. Go ahead and laugh for a minute, huh? So some of you getting nervous. You're like, (laughs) amen. In other words, your trust and your confidence in God. Amen. Now, one of my my, uh, uh, spiritual, uh, someone I look up to is Brother Copeland. So Brother Copeland, he said the Lord told him years ago, I'm going to teach you how to get rich through giving. Hmm. So I've been a partner with him for 40 years, every month. A certain amount every month has grown, 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 been a partner with Brother Copeland. Brother Hagin's ministry, partner with him. Well, Brother Copeland just had his 80th birthday party. All right, so when he had his 80th birthday party, they asked me to be the MC. For the program, because they wanted me to tell, you know, a few jokes in between. They said, we don't want it too serious. We want to have a little fun. So they didn't ask Pastor Mac because they know his jokes. <laughs> so I got to tell a few jokes. So did you hear about the guy, you know, that didn't know what to get his mother-in-law for Christmas? So he finally decided, well, he, so he got her cemetery plot for Christmas for his mother-in-law. And so... She didn't really know how to take that, you know. And so the next year, he didn't get her nothing. And the next year, she said, well, how come you didn't get me nothing for Christmas? He said, well, you didn't use what I got you last year. <laughs> Sorry, so that's not. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I have to have a good sense of humor if you want to survive, all right? So, so now, I'm going to be the MC at the program, right? And so I just come home from like 10, 12 missionary trips. So as soon as I got home, my secretary said, you owe $150,000 in bills right now. I went, <laughs> Jesus, you got mail. So I, then I got to go to Brother Copeland's. Well, it's his 80th birthday. He's been a blessing to me and a blessing to our generation. So I got to take a special, significant, generous offering. So I told the secretary, write out a check. So I took it, gave the check, told a few stories like, uh, you know, and all these preachers, there are 500 preachers there. Brother Copeland, the best partners are there. And so one of my jokes was, uh, did you hear about the butcher? The butcher took his wife to a party for the very first time. So he's introducing her around, and he said, meet Patty. (laughs) All right, now. Explain that to the blonde next to you. But anyway, so I said, meet Patty. Or, she's a larger woman, be double meet Patty. So now, so meet Patty. All right, so I'm telling these jokes, and I'm like, oh, man, I don't even know if Brother Copeland likes these jokes, man. I'm like, I could get a bad prophecy out of this. So, so I told you, we had a blast. Anyway, he, we had a blast, wonderful time. And then I went to Bogota, Columbia to preach, and... Uh, <laughs> When I got down there, Brother Copeland called me. He said, Mark, I'm sitting on my back porch right now, looking at the lake. Cool breeze blowing here. Got my coffee here. Having a great time. 
He said, appreciate you being at my party. He said, you know that joke, meat patty? <laughs> I've been laughing every day about meat patty. I went, ooh, praise the Lord. <laughs> then he said, I got this offering you brought. He said, that's a whopper of a seed. He said, I just came to tell you, you're going to get a whopper of a harvest. Amen. Amen. I said, yes, sir. I'm expecting a whopper of a harvest. When we hung up, I jumped all over the room and went, whoo, I got a whopper of a harvest. Come on. How many know that God guarantees that he'll multiply? He'll make all grace abound towards you. Amen. And so I'm jumping around the room. Within a matter of days, someone sent me about $300,000 within the stage just like that. And I went, because <laughs> when you're sowing, the devil will tell you what you're going to do if that don't work. Then I turn it around and say, devil, what you going to do when it does work? Amen. Come on, don't let the devil scare you out of tithing. Don't let the devil scare you out of giving. Amen. Here's the way the Lord said to me. He said that God's kingdom sowing system will outperform the world's saving system. Nothing wrong with saving. He just said your sowing will outperform your saving. Go ahead and laugh about that and say, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Amen. In this area, come on, it's a step of spiritual growth to receive God's generosity and then say, Lord, let me be generous in my generation. Number one, to the preaching of the gospel of Christ, which is the number one need of this world. Come on, to the church, which is the number one need of America. Come on, supporting the church and the gospel, preaching the gospel so that even after your funeral, your generosity will still be speaking. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Galatians 6.10 says, As we therefore have opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto those that are of the household of faith. The good news is anyone can participate in God's generosity plan. We have to look for the opportunities he gives us to sow our seed. The generosity of a believer affects how they receive the word. When you give, it not only reflects your heart, it also affects your heart. In his book, How to Receive God's Extravagant Generosity, Mark Hankin shares how your spiritual breakthrough may be just as connected to your giving as well as your praying. God will do things for you that money can't do when you're a generous giver. As a bonus, you'll also receive the four CD set, How to Receive God's Extravagant Generosity. This teaching will help you understand how God wants everyone to reap the benefits of his plan for generosity. In this four CD set, Pastor Mark shares four powerful teachings, God's extravagant generosity, a whopper of a harvest, extreme giving, abundant living, and generosity the way to increase. Discover how with God, over and above giving will produce over and above living. Get the book and CD set today. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers worldwide. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and become strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. Your love seat will also help us complete our new Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center. This conference center will help us distribute the word more effectively through conferences and serve as our new television studio. You will receive the book and the four CD set, How to Receive God's Extravagant Generosity for your gift of any amount. You also can download these messages as MP3s in our app for free. For more information, please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Trust you enjoyed the program today. Of course, one of my favorite subjects in the Bible 
is simply generosity, or we also call it supernatural increase. Because sometimes people think, well, the Bible's just talking about people giving, but really, the Lord said, I'm really talking about your receiving. Because he talks about sowing, and he says, and your generous sowing will produce a generous harvest. Well, I was sure interested in that generous harvest. And so I began to study on generosity and giving and supernatural increase. And wow, the things that opened up from the word of God on the possibilities and the promises and even the word that God said that the generous soul shall be abundantly blessed. So I began to study generosity because a lot of times people think they're generous till they run into somebody's generous. Or you could say it this way, God's the most generous or the biggest giver. And actually the Lord said to me, he said, if you'll get addicted to giving, I'll support your habit. Or your sowing will outperform your saving. Or the Lord said to me, uh, I'll do things for you money could never do. There's something about generosity that just opens up the heart of God. God loves a generous, cheerful, happy giver. And there's something about that giving and sowing that God said, I'll multiply your seed zone. And most people are thinking subtraction and God's thinking and multiplication. So I encourage you to get this book. I'm telling you, it may, it may look a little bit funny at the beginning, God's extravagant generosity, but I'm telling you, there's something about it. I love the Proverbs 11, 24, the message Bible says, the world of the generous gets larger and larger and the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. And you get this, it'll tell you how to break certain barriers in your giving and your receiving and how to receive God's best blessing because there is no shortage to God's giving. Come on, sometimes we limit him and we're not able to receive what he has for us. And the Lord told me that one time and how to open up to receive. So if you'll just simply get this book and we'll go through, it'll teach you how to give, how to sow in expectation, how to get happy about your giving and how to see a harvest, a whopper of a harvest come in so that you'll be a testimony of the grace of God, that God will make all grace abound towards you. Wow, what a promise that God will make all grace abound toward you. You have all sufficiency in all things abound to every good work. Look at this, God's extravagant generosity. So I encourage you to get the book. It'll teach you how to go up to a whole new level of receiving from God and also get the CDs or you can download them online. And I encourage you as you do this, your faith for finances, and you'll see supernatural increase, not through some sort of a gimmick, but simply feeding on the Word of God. So I encourage you to get this, and all week long we're talking about God's extravagant generosity. May God richly bless you. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Thank you for watching.